So uh, first of all, I want to welcome you all. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, my name is Zach Scrivener. I'm the Vice Chairman of the uh, Current Council of Governments, and so I want to welcome you for attending our 29th Annual Regional Awards of Merit Ceremony. Tonight, we honor outstanding individuals and organizations that have demonstrated leadership, compassion, and dedication in making their local communities and the entire region of Kern County a better place to live and work. Kern Cog aims to continue the growth and development of our region. Many others stand by this statement as well, and it is thanks to these individuals and organizations that make Kern County beautiful and looking forward to the future. Our award recipients this evening prove that it only takes one individual or one organization to help make a significant difference in their community. They do this with the programs that have the power to transform lives, like Golden Empire Transit's quarterly food distributions, Bike Bakersfield's safety outreach events, and the Westside Healthcare District's dedication in providing health services to all of Western Kern County. Individuals such as Shafter Police Department's Captain, Diana Burnett. And Ron Hughes with Calvans. Have made Kern County a better place through their hard work and dedication to the people they serve. Fortunately, Kern Cog is not the only organization to recognize the important work performed by our award recipients. Tonight's honorees will also be receiving certificates of recognition from the Kern County Board of Supervisors, California Assembly Members Vince Fong and Rudy Salas, State Senators Shannon Grove and Melissa Hurtado, as well as Congressman Kevin McCarthy and TJ Cox. Some of these people are either in the audience themselves or have representatives here to offer their warmest regards. So I'd like to introduce some of the folks that are here. And if you uh, could hold your applause until we're finished. First of all, we have um, our mayors and city council members. If you're a mayor or a city council member, could you please stand? Thank you. Please applaud for all these folks. And our, do, and our representatives from our assembly members or, or congressmen or um, our uh, state senators. Do we have representatives from those offices here? If you could please stand, please. Well, let's applaud for them. We appreciate their certificates. I would also like to thank the hardworking individuals from Kern Council of Governments that make this program successful. Um, you met Rochelle Arvina and Angela uh, Buena, uh, Benuelos as you checked in. They uh, helped us all get in here tonight. Um, and so they also assisted with, with registration. If you could give them an applause as well. Veronica McCulloch was critical in collecting the reservations, managing all the mailings, and requesting the certificates of, representative, of, of recognition from our elected representatives. Um, Karen Vasquez, Kern Cox student intern, she made sure that I have a, a script tonight, so I, I definitely appreciate her. Um, and uh, Suzanne Campbell and Becky Napier helped organize the presentations you will see tonight. So we got a round of applause for them too. Please. Thank you. Without these members of our staff, this program would not happen. So let's, uh, let's recognize them again. Also, I, it's not in my script, but Aaron Hakimi, if we could please recognize Aaron Hakimi, our executive director. Thank you, Aaron. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the creative work of employees at our current government television, better known as KGov. Um, who have helped us de develop this year's presentation, highlighting the programs and individuals being honored for their outstanding achievements. 
Um, so could we give a round of applause to our KGov folks in the back. Thank you guys. They do a great job for us um, each and every each and every week at the Board of Supervisors. Also, a special thank you goes to Tony Moreno for serving as our professional photographer. Tony, thank you. Good to see you. The regional awards are again being recorded and will be replayed uh, next month on KGov. So this way, all of Kern County gets a chance to share uh, in the presentations and all of our, our well-deserving uh, honorees uh, we're going to see here tonight. So what really makes this event special is that our, re our recipients can celebrate with their friends and their families and their co-workers. So thank you all uh, for being here and coming to provide your support for these honorees and to celebrate the wonderful gifts they have bestowed upon us. And so now, on with the show. Thank you. A natural disaster can leave individuals frightened, worried, and concerned for their safety. However, natural disasters can also have the effect of bringing a community closer, working together towards the same goal, and taking care of each other. Tonight, we recognize Mayor Peggy Breeden and Police Chief Jed McLaughlin from the city of Ridgecrest, who worked tirelessly during Ridgecrest's July 2019 earthquakes. Ridgecrest Mayor Peggy Breeden and Police Chief Jed McLaughlin worked tirelessly to calm and encourage Ridgecrest residents. Police Chief McLaughlin worked with all the emergency agencies and was the spokesman for the city. Residents stepped up to help one another cope with the fear, clean up the damage, and brace themselves for aftershocks. Mayor Breeden invited national, state, and local elected officials to observe the area, and on the Friday following the big quake, Representative Kevin McCarthy, Assemblyman Vince Fong, and Senator Shannon Grove toured Ridgecrest and China Lake surveying the damage caused by the earthquake. On that Saturday, Governor Gavin Newsom took a tour of the area with Ridgecrest Police Chief Jed McLaughlin and City Manager Ron Strand, as well as First District Supervisor Mick Gleason. By Sunday afternoon, the Ridgecrest community was focused on transitioning from response to recovery mode. Community members were encouraged to continue to check on one another, maintain a sense of preparedness, and speak out if they needed assistance. Mayor Breeden ended her presentation proclaiming Ridgecrest rocks. On Friday, July 12th, a 4.9 aftershock again rattled the area. It was recorded five miles from Ridgecrest, but the residents felt a little more assured of their safety thanks to the leadership of their great city. Thank you to Mayor Peggy Breeden and Chief of Police Jed McLaughlin for your tireless service and phenomenal guidance to the city of Ridgecrest during this disaster. Thank you. So we, uh, we congratulate Mayor Peggy Breeden and Police Chief Jed McLaughlin as the recipients of our 2019 Regional Award of Merit for Local Government. Come on up. Congratulations. Thank you. Four hours? Yeah, you got, you have, you have 30 minutes. For 30 everybody. minutes for everybody. I'll, I'll keep it short. I have to drive back down to San Diego. So um, thank you to Kern Cog for uh, this recognition and speaking for the mayor as well. I know that she also says thank you. So. This was truly a team effort. It just wasn't her and I, trust me. And it would take hours, if not days, to mention everybody. And so I'll go ahead and mention them now. And uh, uh, first off, to uh, my team, all of uh, my officers, dispatchers, professional staff, volunteers, um, all of the agencies from Kern County, around the state that came, and Kern County dispatchers, not only uh, law enforcement, but fire as well. Our city staff, amazing job, still working, and uh, Kern County Fire. I'm lumping everybody in for a time. Um, all the other departments that responded. Uh, our community. Not only Ridgecrest, but all of Kern County, amazing. And state agencies, Cal OES, Georgiana Armstrong, I don't know if she's here, um, amazing. And my wife, 
for uh, being there. So thank you and thanks. Rich Press on up, rocks. <laughs> There are many organizations that close down due to unpredictable circumstances, but not all start up again. About 16 years ago, the West Side District Hospital closed due to many factors. The healthcare district at the time established the process to open an urgent care facility to help meet the healthcare needs of the district's residents. While not an emergency room, the district was able to expand the amenities at the facility such as the radiology and lab services. The staff of doctors, nurses, and support staff also grew over the years, which enabled the hours of operation to expand. The district was in dire need of a larger facility from their current portable office space. So they began to process of acquiring the funds, land, drawings, and resources to expand into a permanent facility. The Westside Healthcare District, after many years of carefully overseeing their budgets was able to set aside enough reserves combined with a generous donation from a benefactor to fund a $9 million, 13,000 square foot medical clinic to not only expand the urgent care and related services, but also gain additional space for other medical specialty offerings that the district is working to acquire. The groundbreaking for the new site was held on July, 2018, and the soft grand opening is planned sometime by January, 2020. This is the largest medical infrastructure to serve the West Side community since the closing of the hospital. This new facility will continue to serve the needs of the city of Taft and Maricopa, but also the outlying communities in the district's boundaries of Fourth City, South Taft, Taft Heights, Fellows, McKittrick, Derby Acres, Valley Acres, Dustin Acres, and Tupman, and as far as Lost Hills. It is safe to say that Westside Healthcare District has done their best to provide their community and surrounding community members with top-notch healthcare services. All right. So, accept, accepting the award for the, reg, the regional award for community involvement will be board president of the Westside Healthcare District, Eric Cooper. Come on up, Eric. Thank you, Zach. Good evening, everybody. That was a great recap of our, of our journey so far. Again, I'm honored to be the chairman of the board of the Westside Healthcare District. We date back to the 1940s. We're a five-member board. Some of the pictures were shown there. And I'd like to acknowledge some of the staff that have made this happen. We have a great group of professionals that have really come together over this three-year journey to get this project going. So, in addition to myself, I'd like to introduce my wife, Catherine, who's um, here this evening as well. Fellow board members, Adele Ward, please raise your hand or stand up at least. Um, Jeannie Miller and Jan Ashley. And Darren Walrath, who's also accompanied by his wife, Sandra. We have an incredible executive team that has worked tirelessly for the past three years to make this facility a reality. And it couldn't have happened without our fearless leader and our executive director, Jerry Starr. Please stand up, Jerry. Jerry. After an exhaustive and expensive search for an executive director, Jerry came to our office one day for a presentation. And we, um, after he left, we fired the recruiter and we called Jerry back for a little chat. <laughs> We pulled him out of his semi-retirement, and he has been a godsend to our community and to our, our district. So we're, we're honored that he has put so much energy in, and that his wife, Robin, who's with him tonight, has also shared him as well. So thank you very much, Jerry and Robin. Rounding out our administrative staff is our Director of Operations, Ryan Schultz, back there in the corner. Ryan has taken the lead on this construction project and has, his, has had his hand in every aspect of it. And um, we are just excited beyond belief that this project is finally coming together. Um, the staff will start moving in this Sunday and we will start seeing patients in our new 13,000 square foot facility on Monday and we will have our official ribbon cutting on Friday the 13th. 
With us as well is our district manager, Robin Melton, in the corner there. Our clinic director, Summer Looper. And our Heather Bosma, she is our um, primary nurse practitioner um, and an all-star in the office. <laughs> Plus, there is a plethora of Taftians here tonight from the city council to the um, Chamber of Commerce to the Planning Commission and various other community leaders. Would you just at least please raise your hand so you can know what a great Taft presence we have here tonight. Many of these people, almost everybody over there has played a role in the completion of this. And finally, another all-star that we have here is our um, Ron Ostrom. Dr. Ron Ostrom, would you please raise your hand and say hi? <laughs> and his wife Sherry is here. He's our medical director, and he's a trooper, and he has certainly added a whole other level of, uh, of, of uh, professionalism and contacts to our group. So we are definitely appreciative of you. So I'm sure I've gone over my two minutes, and uh, as you can tell, we're very excited and thrilled. So if you're ever out in Taft, come to 100 East North Street and stop in and say hi. We would love to show off our facility. Thank you very much for this honor tonight. Thank you. Food insecurity is a real issue many individuals go through in our community. GetBus is all too familiar with this problem and has helped alleviate food insecurity throughout Bakersfield. Get's commitment to the community goes beyond providing transportation for the people. It also incorporates the transportation of food and resources to Bakersfield residents. Golden Empire Transit District was formed in 1973 and serves the Bakersfield urbanized area. GIT has a fleet of 88 compressed natural gas CNG buses equipped with wheelchair lifts and bike racks. It serves 16 routes which operate 7 days a week and transport more than 6 million passengers each year. In addition, GIT operates 25 CNG get a lift buses for disabled riders and seven micro transit ride shuttles for on-demand curb to curb service. Each quarter, GIT holds a food distribution event in collaboration with the Community Action Partnership of Kearns Food Bank. During 2019, GIT distributed 1,400 bags of food to those in need. GIT's food distribution events help to improve the quality of life for those in need of not only food, but they provide resources for healthcare, finances, and social services. Through access to a network of local nonprofits, GIT was able to garner significant community involvement during their food distribution events. Those who received bags of food were extremely appreciative and expressed their gratitude on GIT's social media platforms. GIT's food distribution events are a primary example of how GIT is continuously responding to the needs of residents throughout the region. This program fosters a sense of togetherness and pride for the Bakersfield community. So accepting the award this year for community involvement is Cindy Para, the board chair of GET. Congratulations, come on up. Thank you. Thank you. We are honored to receive this uh, wonderful award from, Golden, from Kerncock. We are very proud of this program uh, that in partnership with Community Action Partnerships of Kern, we hand out over 350 bags of food to those in our community that sometimes don't know where their next meal is gonna be. GET believes you provide an import, important service to the community with our transit service, service, and this is just one additional way that we can uh, be a part of our community. And it allows our employees to have the opportunity to connect with our people that we give rides to and just to be out there in, in the community. Uh, I'm joined here by our board, Ruben Pascal, Lisa Engel, Carlos Bello and uh, Jim Baldwin, who is not here, but once again, we are proud to receive this award. All right, come on, we'll get a picture for you. Thank you. 
as we all know, transportation and road improvements in Kern County has craved attention for some time. Luckily, there are many organizations continuously working to meet the transportation needs of Kern County's residents. The City of Taft is one such entity, improving their local transit operations with the development of the Taft Transit Center and Park and Ride facilities. City Manager of Taft Craig Jones applied and received a $1 million Public Transportation Modernization Improvement and Service Enhancement Act otherwise known as the P.T. Messia Grant and an additional $400,000 of P.T. Messia funds from Kern Cog to build Taft's Transit Center in 2015. By October 2017, the Taft Transit Center was completed and now serves as a multi-use facility with community members and Taft Area Transit employees enjoying Taft Transit and community centers simultaneously. For the new park and ride facility, Craig Jones secured approximately $500,000 of congestion, mitigation, and air quality program funding in October 2013. The original project site was to be immediately adjacent to the oil worker monument near downtown Taft. With some preliminary engineering design delays and the initiation of the transit center project in late 2014 and early 2015, the two projects began parallel paths to completion. The new layout of existing and new public sites from the west to east were the Oil Worker Monument, Taft Transit Center, and the Park and Ride Facility, making this convenient for Taft residents. The Park and Ride Facility has provided Taft residents with the Carpool Regional Transit option mainly used for those taking Route 120, and ultimately helping the community and the environment by reducing carbon emissions. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Taft City Manager, Craig Jones. Come on Thank you. Well, thank you, and um, um, thank you to Kern Council of Governments for this award and for hosting a wonderful event year after year. Um, I am honored to accept this award on behalf of the City of Taft. Um, I'd like to give thank you to um, our mayors and city council members, past and present, who dedicated a lot, great deal of time and thought into this project over six years. Taft council members, former and present involved with the project, were Mayor Dave Knorr, Mayor Pro Tem Orchard Cryer, Council Member Josh Bryant, former Mayor Pro Tem Renee Hill, former Mayor Randy Miller, and former Mayor Paul Linder. I would also like to express my appreciation to all the staff members who performed many duties and efforts to save the city money. They did so with excitement and enthusiasm. Some of the staff went above and beyond during this project. I would like to point out our planning director, Mark Staples, our city clerk, Yvette Mayfield, and our finance director, Teresa Binkley, for a great job. And again, to the entire city staff, this would not have been possible without the devotion and their dedication. I'd like to go back to a former mayor for a minute. Mr. Paul Linder, who you may know from his time serving as a chair of the Kern Cog Board of Directors. Paul, being a fresh and young retiree in 2015, didn't know what to do with himself. <laughs> so being bored, he took on a job as a construction superintendent with a well-known local contractor and his friend, Glenn Black. He said, just to stay busy. Black Hall Construction competed for and won the opportunity to construct, construct the Taft Transit Center. Paul was excited to be working for Black Hall Construction at the time as he got the opportunity to oversee the project from the foundation trenches to the tip top of the clock tower. As you can see by the finished product, the city, the center demonstrates the contractor's eye for detail and Paul's passion to build a work of art. Use a material like old growth timbers which were used as the exposed beams which span the entire community room just like they did in the old days. The community room now boasts the name the Old Dorado Room, dedicated to the nonprofit Old Dorado Incorporated, who helped brand the building by donating the clock and the tower and many other furnishings which truly made the building a one of a kind. Paul has since retired and again volunteers around town in many ways, including Help Plans Taft 2020 Old Dorado Celebration. 
And in closing, I would like to once again thank current Council of Governments and all the member agencies for the award and all their hard work for keeping our transportation dollars in Kern County. Thank you. Before we, before we start the next presentation, I want to recognize the Senator Shannon Grove and her husband Rick have joined us. Shannon, I know you have a very challenging schedule, so thank you for being here. All right. Thank you. Improvement in transportation in Kern County has always been a collaborative effort. Individuals, agencies, organizations, local government, and businesses working together for a better transportation experience in Kern County. One of the main reasons to improve our transportation options is to help reduce the number of vehicles on the road and ultimately our air quality. GetBus continues to search for new and innovative ways to improve their transit services. The development of their half-off pass program, or HOP, has been one creative idea to encourage bus ridership. The HOP program was funded by a grant from a San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District as part of the Valley Air District's efforts to improve the health and quality of life for all Valley residents. Designed to improve environmental conditions by encouraging new riders to try public transportation, the program offered monthly passes, which provided unlimited rides during the month of purchase for only $21, half off of the standard rate. GetPass sales increased in 2019 due in part to the new riders who participate in the HOP program. The Get HOP program is an innovative concept that focuses on introducing new riders to the public transit system. More specifically, the 2019 HOP program targeted students in Bakersfield during the back to school months of August and September. The HOP program provided these young new riders with access to public transportation at a low cost to travel between school, work, home, and more while remaining focused on their personal growth and independence. GIT's promotional efforts have been effective in providing more people access to public transit at a lower cost, which supports GIT's mission and regional national goals of public transportation. All right. So, accepting the regional award of merit for transportation is GIT's CEO, Karen King, and board president, Cindy Parra. As Zach mentioned, I'm Karen King. I'm the CEO of GET, and we feel very honored to be up here tonight for two awards. So I want to thank Kern Cog for your generosity in recognizing us. We think we've had a great year, and we <coughs> hope to continue that into the future. Our half-off program is courtesy of the San Joaquin Air Pollution Control District, so we thank them as well. It's continuing through September, so I want to invite all of you who may not have taken a ride on the GET bus before to come out, purchase your pass for $21. Actually, I think it's $22.50, but um, <laughs> it's still the best deal in town. And it's half that if you're over 65 or have a disability. So you can come ride our great service. We serve Metropolitan Bakersfield every day. And we're honored to do that and be part of this beautiful community. So thank you for this honor. And thank you for honoring three transit projects tonight. And we always say, get on the get bus, get bus. <laughs> in continuation of the constant need of improved transportation in Kern County, the city of Tehachapi has gone above and beyond to provide sufficient transportation options for their residents. The Tehachapi Downtown Park and Ride and Transit Center transformed the city's only bus stop into a bustling transit center. Previously, the bus stop was located on the outskirts of downtown. The small shelter would quickly fill up, especially during inclement weather. Plus, the only parking available was in an adjacent retail parking lot. The primary purpose of this project was to provide a safe place for residents to park their vehicles in carpool, van pool, or ride the bus to their places of work or school in Mojave, Bakersfield, Lancaster, and beyond. 
The downtown park and ride and transit center location onto Hatchaby Boulevard provides a convenient access for transit patrons. Approximately 100 parking spaces offer an ample room for parking. Bus turnouts on both sides of the Hatchaby Boulevard enable smooth transitions through town and three bus shelters afford enough space for waiting patrons. The parking lot is nearly full on weekdays, indicating the success of the project. The center encourages both carpooling and use of current transit's bus service, thus reducing emissions and congestion by decreasing the number of vehicle trips to both Lancaster and Bakersfield. In addition, the center transformed an old, rundown dirt lot into a valuable resource for the city. Tehachapi residents now enjoy the new and improved transit center with their transportation needs being met. So ex accepting the um, regional award for transportation, first we have, our, of course, Tehachapi's mayor, Susan Wiggins, and, service, and general services, sorry, development services director, Jay Schlosser. So Jay, you're going to speak yeah, for us? Sure. Okay, come on up. Very good. And we'll see you in a picture in a minute. Okay. <laughs> Well, first of all, thank you guys very much. Um, can't tell you how much it, it's appreciated, especially on a staff level, to, to receive a little consideration for all those times. I, I know the other staff members in the room can certainly agree with me when you put all those hours in and to get a little recognition from your peers for that. So thank you, Kern Cog, uh, for your generosity in that. I should also, um, you know, if I'm gonna brag for a little minute, all five of our council members came tonight to support us in this effort. And I think that's, that's a pretty amazing thing uh, when you get that kind of support from from uh, the elected officials that help run your city, that they appreciate that kind of thing. I do want to point out, I want to thank the staff that did this. Projects of this nature um, take dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of people to complete. And so thank you to the City of Tashby staff who did all that work. Um, and I think it's also important, I need to, to thank Kern County in particular. They came alongside us. We moved this transit center uh, to a downtown, uh, a primary downtown location, working with Kern Regional Transit to find the right spot for that. They also helped out by pitching in some of uh, the costs for shelters uh, needed for that project. So a big thank you to Kern County and their efforts to pitch in with us. We were really surprised and thankful. The project boasts over 100 park and ride spots, if you didn't know. Uh, over 60% of the community of Tatchby commutes out every single day. It's a big commuter community. And uh, I mean, literally a week after it opened, we had 60, 70 cars a day in it. So a huge success for us, and we're very proud of the project. So thank you guys very much. Journalism has the power to reach many people and motivate some interesting conversations. Community engagement specialist Key Budge from the City of Tehachapi has done just that with their educational videos. The City of Tehachapi's Community Engagement Department created a series of five videos to educate the community about public safety power shutoffs, otherwise known as PSPS. The compilation of the videos was viewed more than 20,000 times prior to and after the PSPS events in October 2019. The initial video was educational and urged the community to prepare for the pending PSPS events, explaining the necessity of how to be prepared and how to stay informed by the utility companies. The following four videos were created during the unannounced PSPS events in the Tehachapi area, causing unnecessary widespread discomfort for both residents and businesses throughout the greater Tehachapi area. The City of Tehachapi's Community Engagement Department recorded the city personnel interviews with local Bakersfield media in their entirety to create a messaging platform for the community. This enabled the residents to see what the city had done to prepare for PSPS and what they were doing with local state legislators so the community could understand the impact of the constant unannounced PSPS events affecting Tehachapi. The videos were uploaded onto social media platforms and sent to Southern California Edison, Senator Shannon Grove, Assemblyman Vince Fong, Governor Gavin Newsom, and others so the voices of worried residents would be heard. Due to the City of Tehachapi's Community Engagement Department and their Community Engagement Specialist Key Budge, community outreach through social media has increased, meaning a successful PSPS campaign. Accepting the award is Mr. Key Budge. Come on up, Key. Thank you. We, we, uh, when I say, when I talk, it'll be we, because at the city of Tehachapi, we're a team. 
So it's not individual accolades that we get. We do this as a team. So I just want to, when I, whenever I mention we, I'm referring to the city of Tehachapi and our team there. Uh, first, I just want to thank the support that we've got from our management staff, starting with uh, our city manager, and it goes through our executive uh, directors, and then also our city council members, because they're so supportive. If we don't have buy-in on communication, you're not going to have effective messaging. So we've been very fortunate. To, it goes from the top, works its way down to the boots on the ground. Everyone gets effective communication. Um, so uh, thank you for the team, because without the support from all the departments, the message just doesn't really matter. My wife, I want to say thank you to Christine, because without Chris, this is my second career. I've already retired from law enforcement and now pursuing my passion of journalism, and she's there supporting me all the way and encouraging me. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So, um, and also, just a, a quick cheap plug, we've got a podcast that just started. If you guys were coming in and listening to KUZZ, it was on the news. They talked about it. To hatch a pod, subscribe. <laughs> Senator Grove <laughs> is featured in our uh, very uh, first episode that uh, dropped this week. Thank you very much. Riding a bicycle can be dangerous at times, even if you're trying to be overly cautious. That is why Bike Bakersfield has made public safety and education a huge part of their mission. Bike Bakersfield is a 501c3 nonprofit organization working actively to educate the community about the principles of safety in transportation, including proper helmet use, hand signals, pedestrian safety, the importance of lights and staying visible for the safety of all road users. Bike Bakersfield's education programs are designed to teach safe cycling practices and to help residents understand that a community where people can ride bikes is a safer, healthier, more vital place to live. This is evident in their educational programs and youth bike rodeos which connect kids, parents, and teachers to active transportation with a focus on safety and predictability. During 2019, Bike Bakersfield conducted over 20 community rides 30 plus educational events, distributed roughly 900 safety light sets and over 300 helmets. With a great deal of attention given to the month of May as Bike Awareness Month, Bike Bakersfield coordinated numerous rides and commuter stations throughout the city and with limited staff. This agency does a lot to help teach not only the cyclists and pedestrians to understand their contributions to our great city, but also help drivers remember that we share our road with more than one form of transportation. It is rewarding to watch the children get motivated by Bike Bakersfield's presentation to cycle more and to make it a primary mode of transportation to and from places. The continued encouragement of active transportation by Bike Bakersfield will improve the universal challenges of health, livability, and the environment. Thank you, Bike Bakersfield, for demonstrating year after year the importance of public safety in Kern County. Accepting the Richard A. Maxwell Award for Public Safety is Jason Carter, board member, Bike Bakersfield. Bike, Bike All right. Well, let, me, let me start by first thanking uh, the current Council of Governments on behalf of Bike Bakersfield for this award. Uh, we've enjoyed our, our partnership with you all since we began as an organization and been thankful for the support that we've received. Bike Bakersfield started in 2005 by uh, a local engineer who now has served on the Bakersfield City Council for about eight years, uh, Bob Smith, with a simple purpose, and that was to promote biking for everyday transportation. He himself was a cyclist for over 25 years at that point. He raised his family in Bakersfield, he grew a business here, and uh, he rode his bike to work every day during that time. And he wanted that experience to be, to be felt by the rest of the community. Uh, in the last 15 years, we've seen a great improvement in those efforts. Uh, as I look out here tonight, I see a lot of communities that we've had the honor to work with, so I want to thank you all for the partnerships that we've been able to, to have over the last few years. Tonight, I want to also recognize uh, my fellow board members, Cindy Parra and uh, Corrine Clarenborg in the back. Clarenborg? I tried, I tried. Uh, and most importantly, as you heard those numbers tonight, over, over 20 community rides, 30 safety events, uh, 900 set lights sets, 
and 300 helmets. I want to thank uh, Aaron Gonzalez and Asha Chandri. If you guys can uh, stand up, we can give a round of applause to our to the to our staff who, who who worked tirelessly to make these efforts happen. And so, uh, with that, I want to thank you all again for your continued partnerships. Uh, we can't do this without you all. Uh, we really believe that biking is something that can add to the quality of life for all of our residents in Kern County. And we want to continue those relationships into, the, into 2020. So again, thank you all. Jason Carter, thank you. Bravery is not the absence of fear, but action in the face of fear. Captain Diana Burnett emulated this belief while serving in public safety for 27 years with the Shafter Police Department. Captain Burnett began her career with the city of Shafter in 1992. When the population was just around 7,000, technology was nothing like we have today and women in law enforcement was a rarity. With over 2,500 hours of recognized post training, she has earned certifications from the State of California Peace Officer Standards and training of basic, intermediate, advanced, and supervisory and management. She also holds two certifications from the Robert Presley Institute of Criminal Investigations in Homicide and Domestic Violence Investigations. She is a graduate of the Sherman Block Leadership Institute. Over her career, she gained the trust of her coworkers as well as the residents of Shafter and has served in a number of various assignments such as a DARE officer, field training officer, reserve officer coordinator and trainer, and youth council coordinator. Captain Burnett has worked criminal investigations and presently supervises all criminal investigations that are processed and handled by the detectives. Along with these responsibilities, she is also the Department Field Training Officer Coordinator, overseeing 290 sex registrants and is the liaison coordinator with the County Street Interdiction Team. She has also volunteered to represent the department with the Kern County Domestic Violence Law Enforcement Committee and with the City of Shafter Emergency Operations Center as the Press Information Officer. Captain Burnett has shown excellent commitment to public safety in the city of Shafter and phenomenal leadership through the many different titles she has attained. Captain Diana Burnett, Shafter Police Department, come on up. I want to say thank you to Kern Cog and the city of Shafter, Shafter City Council. I'm very honored, but also very humbled because I don't think it's fair to receive an award for doing something that I love very much every day in a city that I love to work for very much and call my home. That is the greatest honor um, beyond anything to serve the city, but I am very thankful for the award as well. Also to my brother and sister-in-law for introducing me to this crazy career <laughs> because they gave me a home when I wasn't even sure where I was gonna live and I looked up to them they are my mentors. They guided me through the academy, and there are so many other great mentors at that table. Great leadership from the city. Um, my feet never hurt it too much when I was working events with Mark and Becky Greer because they were out volunteering, uh, doing things that I was getting paid for. Um, so just thank you. Very humbled. And Congratulations. By that. Thank, thank you. Leadership is practiced not so much in words as in attitude and in actions. Ron Hughes exemplifies stellar leadership through his hard work and commitment to the California Vanpool Authority, also known as CalVans. Before CalVans, the service was known as Agricultural Industries, Transportation Services, and only served Kings, Fresno, and Tulare County. Ron took it upon himself to expand the existing Vanpool program to include farm workers after 13 farm workers passed away in a 1999 collision due to unsafe farm worker transportation practices. Despite pushback from the state and U.S. Department of Labor, Ron accomplished an MOU with the Department of Labor to allow CalVans vehicles without penalization in 2016. Now, CalVans serves over 15 counties, allowing farm workers to drive safer vehicles with equitable insurance coverage. The demand for agricultural van pools has grown immensely since the new partnership. In 2018, the California Air Resource Board through California Climate Investments granted CalVans with a grant 
to purchase hybrid vans to serve disadvantaged communities. Ron Hughes has invested much of his time and effort to this thriving organization that he started many years ago. Vanpool serve as a way to remove excess vehicles from the road while getting people to and from work, whether they work in the same workplace or drop off people along the way. Vanpoolers have the freedom to choose their time, route, and the people they ride with, making the drive to their destination an enjoyable experience. Ron's vision has continued to grow and will continue to grow for the years to come. He's a visionary, innovator, distinguished leader, and committed to help his community. He retired from Cal Vans in June 2019 and leaves a legacy to be fulfilled. And thanks to him, Cal Vans is becoming a household name. I want to thank Kurt Cog for this recognition and uh, just what, be, what was an idea 20 years ago with two people is now an organization of 40, 800 vehicles serving uh, 14 counties that serves the, the people who need transportation in this area. In Kern County, we provide van pools to correction officers, farm workers, some travel as far as Ventura to come to work in the valley each day. Uh, again, that's something that uh, they need and something that we're proud to provide and we're glad Kern Cog is a member of Calvans. I want to and I want to reach out to my staff. I've got, without my staff here, nothing happens. And so since I retired, uh, it's in good hands. So thank you. All right. thank you. When multiple organizations, businesses, and individuals recognize the same person for their work, that person must be quite special. Kern Cog would like to recognize a distinguished leader in Kern County whose commitment to his advocacy does not go unnoticed. And that individual is Mayor Dave Knower. Dave started working in the oil industry in 1981 and in 1991 started working in Taft's oil fields. During this year, he also purchased Huddleston Crane, a business which he still owns. Over the past several years, Dave's knowledge of the local oil and gas industry has really come to the forefront, making him a kind of unofficial spokesperson for oil and gas industry education. Dave dedicates a lot of his personal time sharing his extendable knowledge of oil and gas to eliminate misinformed perceptions. When asked how he expected to change so many misinformed perceptions of this industry, his response is always one mind at a time. Dave states that it is a marathon that he's running. A marathon to inform everybody that oil is not only used for vehicles, but also for other uses, like asphalt for our roads, plastic used in our cars, and renewable wind turbines. Dave always keeps his composure and remains respectful, which only adds to his wonderful persona. Dave is serving his second term as mayor of Taft. He donates his city council stipend back to fund the upkeep of Veterans Memorial Park and the annual Veterans Day Parade. He has been recognized for his advocacy in the past by many individuals, such as Senator Shannon Grove and Governor Gavin Newsom. Now, Kern Cog would like to recognize Dave for his continuous effort in educating people about the extreme importance of oil and gas production, which is a true treasure in Kern County as it is a large contributor to our economy. Please welcome Mayor Dave Knorr. <laughs> you all are entirely too kind. You got to be thinking, is it really fair to honor one guy when he is the mayor of a city that is so full of quality people that fully 20% of our population has already been honored tonight? They're right here. <laughs> How easy can it be? And it is. It is, I love representing the people of the city of Taft. These people, like you've already seen tonight, uh, they are morally strong, they don't give up, they know what's right. If we're surrounded by wrong, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change our behavior, it does not change our goal. And it won't change the outcome, because that's the way the people of the city of Taft are. Another thing that makes it good and makes it easy for us is we have ready access to strong representation. From the county level, whether it was David Couch or now Zach Scrivener, to Senator Shannon Grove, who I gotta tell you, if I had a partner in crime in this world, it is Shannon Grove. I can tell you stories about how we communicate with one another and at what times we communicate 
when 95% of the people are sleeping, even if they're insomniacs, they're sleeping, for Christ's sake. It doesn't matter because she never quits thinking about the people she represents, and that's the relationship we have. And she came all the way down from Sacramento tonight to get here. And, and how do you pronounce Gavin? They got that right. I, I Gavin? Know. Gavin? She arranged for my meeting with Gavin as well. That's right. I will tell you a quick story. I was celebrating my birthday with my family. My lovely wife Tammy is here, my son DJ, and thank you all for supporting all the time I spend on these things. We're celebrating my birthday with the rest of my family from all over the country in Las Vegas. That's right, we're in Las Vegas. We're gonna have one more evening in Las Vegas, and I got a text from Shannon Grove. It said, Dave, need you in Sacramento tomorrow to meet with the governor's staff at noon. I was in Las Vegas. So I told my wife, told my son, I said, hey, I gotta go to Sacramento. We left Las Vegas next morning at 4.15, drove to Taft. I got cleaned up, changed my clothes, sprinted to Sacramento and met with uh, Gavin's staff <laughs> and Senator Shannon Grove. But that's the kind of relationship we have. So I'm honored uh, to humbly accept this award this evening. And we're gonna keep fighting the fight. We're gonna get the information out there, the real information. We will tell the whole truth because in spite of, and Gavin once told me <laughs> that his bias has been consistent, oil and gas and the benefits that we all get from it every single day has no bias. Whether you appreciate it and support it or you hate it and want to get rid of it, you depend on it and you benefit from it every single day. So I want to thank you all very much. Uh, I'm a lucky guy. I'm a lucky guy to get to work with the people I do, to represent the people I represent, and to be up here tonight. Thank you all very much. Have a great evening. Dedication to public service is not for all. Public servants must have integrity, accountability, honesty, competence, public trust, and public interest to make an impactful difference. Bakersfield City Manager Alan Tandy has exemplified his public service values with 27 years of service to the City of Bakersfield since 1992. Under Allen's tenure, the city's general fund has increased from $77 million to $287 million with the operating budget expanding from $75 million to $520 million. Allen has actively been part of Bakersfield's growth. The city has grown in population from 179,000 to 389,000 and is now California's ninth largest city. The quality of life for Bakersfield residents has been a priority for Allen. He has diligently seen the growth of the city by providing the residents with enhanced opportunities and entertainment. There has been an increase in the total number of parks from 35 to 59 parks, including the Kaiser Permanente Sports Village, Mesa Marin Sports Complex, the park at Riverwalk, Era Park, Greystone Park, Yokuts Park, City in the Hills, and many more. Several downtown enhancement projects have also been completed including the Mechanics Bank Arena, formerly Robble Bank Arena, and Centennial Garden, the Amtrak Station, the McMurdy Aquatic Center, the Valley Children's Ice Center, Chester Avenue and Q Street Streetscapes, Mill Creek, Sister City Garden, and the Federal Courthouse. Allen's dedication, hard work, and leadership has been significant. There have been several public and private partnerships established over the years benefiting the city of Bakersfield. Several of these partnerships have received regional and national attention due to the impacts they have had on the community and can easily be utilized by other jurisdictions who seek to improve their communities. Alan Tandy has instilled his dedication and outstanding qualities in the employees of the city of Bakersfield that will continue to improve the quality of life of the residents of this city in the years to come. Alan Tandy was unable to join us tonight. He's taking his retirement seriously. I think he's in Egypt, uh, cruising down the Nile River right now. But uh, we do have a few words from him uh, via video.
to thank uh, the current Council of Governments for uh, awarding me this recognition. Uh, I have been very fortunate to have worked a long time in Bakersfield and to have had good city councils, good city staffs, and the dynamic nature of Bakersfield is such that I've had an opportunity to be involved in a lot of different projects and activities. Uh, it's been very rewarding and uh, again I'm appreciative to the COG for the recognition. Thank you. Kern County and the cities within it have been blessed with some wonderful employees who work tirelessly to provide the best services possible to their community. Mark Evans was one such man, a lifelong employee for Kern County's Public Works Department. Mark begins his civil engineering career with Kern County right after obtaining his bachelor's degree from Fresno State. In his 33 years of service, Mark worked in the roads division, then construction, onto design, then manager of engineering and ended his career leading the maintenance. His design crew was responsible for the designs of nearly 200 projects during his tenure, which included not only roads, but creek culverts, drainage improvements throughout Mojave, parking lots, and even airport runaways. Of all of the numerous projects Mark had his hands in, he was probably most proud of the Kernville Walkable Community Project, which included a handicap accessible concrete path along the Kern River. It was a controversial project with differing opinions on what should be included and Mark, being sensitive to the residents' concerns, held many, many community meetings and gained their support of this project. Anyone who worked in public works throughout the county knew of Mark Evans. If it wasn't for the many projects he mastered, it was his perpetual smile and great personality. Mark strived to be the best mentor and squad leader to those lucky enough to work for him. He was a devoted public servant that served with passion, integrity, and lots of laughter. He would say it was always a good day when he was out with the boys looking at roads. If you ask Mark what he was most proud of, it would be his three sons, Michael, Daniel, and Justin. But Mark knew he couldn't accept all of the credit for how great his boys were. He gave much credit to his wife, Karen, whom he adored dearly. Sadly, we lost Mark last summer. His contributions to his community could not go unrecognized. We thank Karen and the boys for sharing Mark with us. He was an extraordinary man who lived an extraordinary life. Thank you. Thank you. Karen Evans, Mark's thank wife. You. Now you're going to make me cry. I was doing fine. Uh, thank you. What a nice tribute. And I love the video. Thank you, Yolanda Alcantar and those people at Kern County who put Mark's name forward for this award. And thank you, Kern Council of Government. This is a wonderful event. Uh, I always cherish any time we can get everybody together. So thank you. Um, I do have some things written down just so I don't forget. Uh, I want to acknowledge the Kern County Roads Department. We showed up today with um, a lot of Mark's work family, and, and that's what they were to him um, for 33 years. Those people supported him and, and helped him to be the man that he became. Um, I want to acknowledge also at, at the, uh, the family table uh, our three boys, Michael, Daniel, and Justin, who are here tonight. Um, <laughs> And they do continue to make us proud in a lot of different ways. Um, we also have um, Jane Talbot, who worked with Mark, Patsy Ebel, who worked with Mark, um, Craig Pope, who worked with Mark, who have become part of the family, uh, the extended family, and I'm, I'm pleased they're here tonight. I also have um, Mark's sister Jean here tonight, who I think is probably mostly responsible for the um, cooperation that Mark learned over time. He was a triplet, and Jean, Jean could kick his ass, so uh, he learned to cooperate with, uh, with people from the moment he was born. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a posthumous award is for the person who's being honored, but it's also for the people that he's left behind, and uh, I want to 
say that uh, if you knew Mark, I hope, I hope you got a chance to meet him. He probably, you probably knew what sports teams he liked, right? And he probably knew the sports teams that you liked and uh, knew a little bit about your children. And so I want to encourage you, um, I think this award is to say, this is kind of how we hope people um, behave in the public world and, and in, their, in their homes as well. But uh, tomorrow, say something nice to one of your coworkers, maybe ask them uh, something about their family so that they can become connected. You know, when someone like Mark dies, um, they leave quite a hole. And I, I've been finding that if you, if you reach out across that hole and pull those strands kind of together, you, you can patch that hole pretty well. It's never going to be the same, but um, it's going to be pretty good. So reach out, reach out to people that are retired that you miss, give them a, a card or a a thank you and, and say, uh, say some nice things to people at work because sometimes we forget and all the, the mess. But thank you very much for this award. It's a, it's a wonderful honor for everybody here in our family and, and we do appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Isn't she amazing? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. That brings us to the end of our program. Uh, please join me in one last round of applause for all of our award recipients tonight. Such a, a fabulous trip. And for all of you who would like to get pictures, and I think that's probably just about everybody, Tony Moreno will be right here in the back um, for that. So once again, thank you all for attending and, and uh, congratulations to all our, our awardees. Thank you so much. Good night.